Hello, my name is Yusun Park and I will be presenting this week's case of the week on small bowel carcinoid tumor. An 80-year-old male with a past medical history of vascular dementia, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and Parkinson's disease presented to the emergency department with dysphagia leading to severe protein malnutrition requiring percutaneous gastric tube placement. He denied any fever or abdominal pain. On the left, an axial IV contrast enhanced CT image of the abdomen and pelvis in the late arterial phase demonstrates a small partially calcified soft tissue mass in the ileocecal mesenteric fat, labeled in the white arrow. On the right image, you can see that there is an enhancing intraluminal mass in the distal ileum, labeled in the yellow arrow. The absence of oral contrast allows this intraluminal mass to be visualized. On the left, we have a coronal view of the same CT demonstrating the small enhancing intraluminal mass in the distal ileum, labeled in the yellow arrow, and the small partially calcified soft tissue mass in the ileocecal mesenteric fat, labeled in the white arrow. On the right, we now have a sagittal view demonstrating the same small partially calcified soft tissue mass located in the ileocecal mesenteric fat, labeled in the white arrow. Imaging findings are consistent with a small bowel carcinoid tumor with local mesenteric metastasis. It is important to note that in general, small bowel neoplasms are relatively rare. The most common small bowel tumors include adenocarcinoma, neuroendocrine tumors, lymphoma, and gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Due to the small size of the primary small bowel carcinoid tumors, they are usually not seen on CT imaging, but they occasionally can be, as in this case. Adenocarcinoma manifests as a heterogeneous and commonly obstructing mass. Carcinoid tumors can similarly cause bowel obstruction. However, it causes desmoplastic reactions, which lead to fibrosis and tethering of the adjacent bowel. This in turn produces hairpin kinks, increasing the risk for bowel obstruction. Furthermore, unlike a carcinoid tumor, adenocarcinoma does not have calcified mesenteric metastasis. Similar to carcinoid tumor, lymphoma manifests as a short segment of bowel wall thickening with regional lymphadenopathy on CT. However, lymphoma typically manifests as one large mesenteric mass with surrounding lymph nodes. Additionally, most carcinoid tumors have calcification in the associated metastatic deposits, which is typically not seen in lymphoma. Unlike carcinoid tumors, gastrointestinal stromal tumors typically occur in the stomach and less likely in the small bowel. While both carcinoid and GIST are known to present in the mesentery, calcification is very uncommon in GIST. Lastly, GIST presents as a deep crescent-shaped ulceration of the bowel with peripheral enhancement due to having a central necrotic exophytic bulky mass. Carcinoid tumor presents in the fifth or sixth decades of life with a prevalence in males over females. Patients with obstructive tumors will present with nausea, emesis, and abdominal pain. Non-obstructive tumors are typically asymptomatic until development of hepatic metastatic disease known as carcinoid syndrome. This involves episodic cutaneous flushing, diarrhea, and wheezing due to the increased effects of serotonin. On CT imaging, small bowel carcinoid tumor will present as an enhancing solitary mass within the small bowel lumen with a heterogeneous mesenteric mass. This intraluminal bowel mass can be obscured by high attenuated oral contrast. On MRI, carcinoid tumors isointense to muscle on T1 weighted imaging, hyperintense or isointense to muscle on T2 weighted imaging, hyperenhancing on post contrast T1 weighted imaging, and mesenteric metastases are typically hypointense on both T1 and T2 weighted imaging. For nuclear medicine, 68 gallium Dota tape PET CT and 18F FDG PET scans can be helpful for diagnosis. Patients with imaging and biochemical findings of small bowel neuroendocrine tumors will typically undergo surgical biopsy or core needle biopsy. Local regional tumors can be treated with local resection of the small bowel and regional lymph nodes. Patients with metastatic tumors are shown to have favorable prognosis due to various therapeutic options, including chemotherapy, somatostatin analogs, and liver-directed therapy. That is the end of the case presentation. Thank you so much for listening and allowing us to present our work.